miserable single people. My name is Donna, but enough about me. Let's talk about why you're here to listen to me. You're single and miserable, am I right? Of course I am. If I weren't, I want to be the co-owner and operator of Millennium Relationship Services, the oldest dating service in the universe. We bring sad, lonely, my life is over, I have nothing left to live for. Lonely nobodies together in an effort to make their lives a tiny bit less awful. How we do that is a co-owner of MRS, Deborah. Hi Donna, hello sad and miserable people. Thanks for all that applause. I thought you were gonna let me know when it's five minutes place. Well, Deborah, why don't you tell these soon-to-be happy people what we do here at MRS? You're alone, which is where we come in. With over a million years, imagine people according to their likes, wants, needs, plus those characteristic traits buried way down in their subconscious. MRS is the only service qualified to weed out the weeds and plant the seeds of a quality relationship. This is the reason that everyone fill out that questionnaire. Yes, a 50-page single-space questionnaire may feel like overkill, but we can't do our jobs without all the information. We know you're eager to get started, so why don't we bring out our first prospective couple? Please welcome to the stage with a big round of applause, Jenna and Achilles! Uh, where are we? You're here to meet the man of your dreams and live happily ever after. I don't understand. Who are we? Who are you? Get a little question and ask yourself over here. Who are you talking to? Who am I talking to? Well, them, of course. But there's no one there. Of course there's someone there. Many someones, billions, trillions, gazillions of someones. Does that make you nervous? That's the universe. Everyone's there. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Where is that coming from? Everywhere. I'm leaving. Ditto. What happens when you are zapped into a parallel universe? But it is a universe you already recognize. This is what happens to Jenna and Achilles in Historically Bad First Dates by Sean Avery. Where is the exit? Just go back the way we came in. Right. Uh, I don't remember how we came in, do you? Absolutely. Absolutely I have no idea how we got here. <laughs> All right. You might as well say you're gonna be here a while. Did you kidnap us? Of course not. It's just all part of the plan. What plan? It's not part of the plan to tell you what the plan is at this moment. And then we're here to set you two kooky kids up as a couple. Too much knowledge of the end game could cloud your minds and possibly make you less receptive to the plan. I think I figured it out. You did? Yes, I'm in a coma. I've been in some horrible accident or I'm on an operating table or something. Now I'm in a coma. And at some point, I'm going to wake up. Does it make you feel better to think that? Absolutely. Good. So if you're in a dream, how am I here? There are always other people in your dream. They'd be pretty boring if they weren't. Right, but I'm real and can think things for myself. <laughs> Plus we've never met, so how could I be in your dream? You're a combination of different people I've met in my life put together by my brain. Right. How about the fact that I can control my own actions without your subconscious telling me what to do? Okay, then wait. <sighs> Not done discussing. We can talk all you want. Honestly, it really helps move things along as we unite you two in couplehood. And how exactly are you going to do that? We don't even know each other. You know you do, actually. Everything you need to know is on that device. You lost the tip of your finger playing soccer. Uh, that's awfully specific, but yes, let me see that. Whoa, this scrolls on forever. You know it does, actually. And you have this because? Because we do our homework. To make sure any two people we pair up are natural matches. We give you the best possible scenario to help you two become a successful couple. But that's not all we do. It's not? No way. Throughout history, there have been bazillions of bad first dates. Most couples overcame these awkward starts to forge successful, strong relationships. Let's bring out a first example couple. Before they were the first lady and president of the United States, they were just two crazy kids looking for love in the colonies. George Washington and Martha Custis. <laughs> this looks like the perfect spot here in the province of Virginia for a picnic. <laughs> Don't you agree? It's beautiful. It was so romantic for you to suggest a picnic as our first date and suggest that I make all the food for us. Well, it is 1757. The woman's place is the kitchen. 
If I did that, I wouldn't have time to do important things like powdering my wig or orchestrating our freedom from British rule. But I'm sure you'll agree that I was very generous in letting you play on the menu without any help from me. Careful, I might ask the vote. <laughs> You're a progressive woman, Martha, and I like that. Now, what did you make? Well, we're in Virginia, so I decided to make a dish that I created with Virginia ham. I chopped them up, added some cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, and sour cream. I served them in these corn shells. <laughs> These are delicious. What are they called? I call them tacos. <laughs> you are a culinary genius. Someday history books will teach of Martha Washington, inventor of the taco. And for dessert? I'm a big fan of pastry, so I make a good soon to be American once we decide on America for our country, cherry pie. Cherry pie? Here, how does it taste? It's delicious and it I cannot tell a lie. Your pie tastes horrible. It tastes like murder in a crust. Why, I never. Well, that may have been a bit too harsh. I meant more like a salt in a crust. I'm leaving. No, please stay. I just have this thing about lying. It's impossible for me to lie. But shouldn't that be the way it always should be? Shouldn't we always be honest? I don't know. I told you your pie was terrible for the greater good. I guess that makes sense in a weird way. <laughs> yes, so let's just continue enjoying our picnic. Yes, let's. Oh, how do you like my ensemble? Well, um, I cannot tell a lie. Your clothes make you look like Mrs. Butterworth. History will reflect upon this moment and say, yes, you do indeed look like a fat bottle of maple syrup. <laughs> you said that before, was it a lie? <laughs> what did you learn from their relationship? Well, George fell into that, does this outfit make me look fat trapped and made the mistake of telling the truth. That's pretty sexist. Is it though? I mean, you two seem to know everything. Has there ever been a man in history who has answered that a way a woman wanted it to be? Just once. And what happened? The universe kind of came to an end and we kind of had to start over. Ouch. <laughs> so the lesson? I don't think it was the question that made the state bad. George and Martha had a long, happy marriage. She actually accompanied him on the battlefield, so she was pretty tough. She could totally handle someone telling her that her outfit made her look fat. But she didn't. Tact. He could have told her with tact. You know, that's a very astute observation. Good job. Let's keep this relationship train moving. Put your hands together for our next mismatched couple. He's a spare parts Romeo or a jigsaw Juliet. Can they piece together a romance? Let's meet Frankenstein's monster, and hopefully soon to be Brad of Frankenstein. Right this way, I have a surprise for you. Uh, everything is ready, master. From the mind of genius, that's from the world's greatest creation. Until now, my greatest creations have dressed in more than 12 different ways. We've sold thousands of them on home shopping. But you, you are a greater creation than any 12-way dress could ever be. You are a super genius, master. What else I created for you? A table! I think somebody else already created the tables, Master. See here, my greatest creation. Ugh. I would be the genius that I am to take care of my greatest creations. Therefore, I have created something for you. Another great creation. Ugh. Something you've wanted ever since I created you two hours ago. Ugh, Brian! You ain't Brian! Brian, Brian! Brian, Brian! Okay, let's sew this down the teensiest bit. I didn't make you a bride. Uh, make bride! Make bride! Uh. Oh, uh, stop. I didn't make you a bride, but I made you a date. Date! Uh. You can't have a bride without at least a date first. I can't just create a bride dream for it to go well. I mean, I'm a mega genius, so there's just one thing all my education and book smarts can't let me figure out. Women. So, <laughs> sit down. It's time for the day of Frankenstein. Bring out the date. Perfect. I love my work. <laughs> Pretty. Pretty awesome, you mean. All right, Igor, are you ready to bring my other greatest creation to life? Yes, master. No more lightning storms to raise the dead. I have installed a simple on switch in her back. It's connected to a rechargeable battery. Igor, flip the switch. <laughs> Female monster, behold, have I got a guy for you. Meow. Head. Kate's brain master. Kate? 
Yes. Bring me the jar that Brain was in. See? Kate. <laughs> that spells cat, you moron! Meow. Ugh, kitty, bad date. Igor! <laughs> to stay or climb out the bathroom window. Oh, gee, we totally agree. High five. Sounds like there's been some learning going on. Open your minds to what's possible. Every thought, every literary character, person, idea ever lives is a real breathing being on its own universe. My head hurts just trying to visualize that. Okay, so every character I've ever imagined actually lived on some planet somewhere? I get that. What I don't get is why we're here. Why'd you host watch all those examples of horrible dates? What was this all about? Young lady, you didn't just li watch horrible dates. You lived horrible dates. You lived all those lives. We were just playing back the videos. What? How can that be? Reincarnation. Familiar with the word? Yeah. I'll just let that be me and the kind of for a moment then. Wait a minute. So you're saying I was Frankenstein's monster? Sweet. And Reincarnation is a tool we use to create the perfect reality. Every time you live a life, you learn from it. Unfortunately, 99% of your acquired knowledge is lost when you're reincarnated. Most of what you remember is stuff that pops up in dreams and just deja vu. When it seems like you've done it before, you have done it before! So wait, you're saying Jenna and I have lived all of our lives together? With the exception of a few experimental variations here and there, yep. Sweet. Reincarnation, huh? We are the perfect couple. <laughs>